Okay, in this recording, uh, we're going to use your scanned images. So for this exercise, you'll need to scan an image out of your journal. You'll need to download this image. So download it. I've done that already. Then once you've downloaded it, I save it somewhere where you can work on it. I'm going to open up GIMP quickly. Okay, now in our previous classes, we've been using different size of images and I'm starting to introduce you to those formats that we're using. So we'll need to create a square. So we're going to go to new. We're going to create a square image, 080 pixels by 080 pixels. In advanced options, an additional setting that we are going to select is we're going to change the bit depth to 16. So it just gives us a broader um, data package to work with. I'm going to press OK. Now, you'll notice that it will start with a back background. You could have set this in the beginning. What I am going to do is I'm going to change this to be a white background. So I'm going to use the fill tool very quickly. And here I'm going to pick you'll see your foreground and background colors. If this is different, you can reset it by clicking this little icon below, below the foreground and background. So with my foreground color active as white, you'll see foreground. You can change these settings here. I'll recommend keeping it the same as mine and I'm gonna simply drop in that color. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open as layer. So I'm gonna open as layer. I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I'm gonna quickly insert this image. So I'm gonna rotate it. Now you will need to move it on your canvas and get the right location. So I'm quite happy with this image for the time being. Remember, you can move it all the way. You can move it around. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of scaling just to make sure that this is scaled correctly. You can, re you can rescale or readjust. You'll see that the scale handles change to see what you're seeing. So that's actually quite neat. So I'm going to scale it a bit like that. Use the scale tool. That's quite neat. And then I'm going to use the rotation tool very quickly. What I like about the rotation tool, you can move this little grip around so it allows you to rotate it. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm gonna rotate this image. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come, I'm gonna click on the layer, right click on the layer, I'm gonna make sure that this image, this layer is the correct image size. I'm gonna say layer to image size, and you'll notice that that yellow dash line around the image is now adjusted. Okay, so once that's happened, all you need to start doing now is correcting this image. Now there's two methods of doing this. If you go to color, you can use the levels and curves. However, the first thing I would do is I'll get rid of all the unnecessary color and I'll use desaturate to do that, okay? The next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to color again. So the first step I'm gonna do is use the curves option. So let me just talk you through this. You'll notice in the curves option, you've got this graph that's just the spectrum of color that's available. So all that we're doing is we're just playing with the balance between light and dark. And you can see just by using this setting, I can get a very good result. You can press OK to complete your um, edits. Or I'm gonna go, I'm gonna undo it. I'm gonna show you another method. So you've got a color and you've got a levels. Just remember this is, this is doing more or less the same thing. I'm gonna adjust the balance between light and dark. This just does, this gives you another method where you can, so you can see I can, this actually works quite well and I can play with this gray zone to see I can get rid of, so it's just at what point things become gray. Okay, so I can re-edit this and make everything dark again, but you can see I can achieve pretty much the same results. Okay, so that's quite neat. Sometimes I know that this doesn't work all the time, but you can pick what is what is black and what is white so you can also do that so you can see that works pretty well so i'm pretty happy with the results i can accept that as well just remember at any point you can go back to um, brightness and contrast and you can also go and play with these settings okay you can see you can make things look a lot brighter so that's also done quite a great job so i'm going to press ok all i have to do now is get rid of this background color so i need to get rid of this information over here the best way to do that is use the fuzzy tool and select in these areas. Okay, so you can select all of that information, for example, and you can press delete. Because remember, we've got a white background, so that does work. You can delete that. Oop. Be careful what you select. So you have to click and drag down. It just selects more spectrum of color. Or you can just use the paintbrush tool, make sure it's white, and you can go and just make sure nothing's selected in this option. So you can get rid of, see, that's also very quick. And this is a good tool to go and touch up you can paint or on this layer you can use the erase tool so it doesn't matter because remember you're seeing your 
you're actually seeing your background so you can use the erase tool sometimes I prefer the erase tool because remember we've got two layers here if I switch this off see I deleted a lot of the background and I can go and edit this okay so this is quite neat what I do like about the fuzzy selection tool you can start adding colors so if I want to select this tent and just remember you've got different mo modes that you can use I keep it on this one because then I can use control and shift so if you use shift you see I can add to that selection at any point now I can go and drop some color back into this image for example and I can use the full tool and you see I can actually start adding and colorizing these images quite quickly okay but the purpose of today's exercises to rework one of your hand sketches you can then merge this image down so it becomes one image once you're happy with the result you can simply go and file you're going to go export as and here PNG or JPEG I don't mind provided it's the correct size for this exercise I want everyone to make a JPEG okay but please as I said PNG or JPEG I'm going to save this on my desktop and I'll just show you the end result Go one export now on my desktop you'll notice that I've got this image and if you open this image now voila now you can post this on your social media remember you can use your Instagram accounts and you can use hashtag book in the journal so you're gonna publish this on Instagram and you're gonna upload this to your folder that I've given you in the workshop